Howdy folks, it's me, Randy Ray, and we're coming to the end of June on the range, but I don't think it's too late for me to create another darn June on the range tag. So, inspired by a recent video I saw from, from Steve about Star Trek, I have a list here of 10 Western movies, and you might argue that some of them aren't Westerns, but they are Westerns of sort even number 10 on this list, and corresponding questions with each. So what you've got here is you've got a, a list of 10 movies that I think you should watch because they're all great, and also a list of 10 questions inspired by those movies for this tag. So this is the first time I've ever created my own tag, um, but it belongs to BookTube now, doesn't it? So number one. Dead Man from 1995. It's a Jim Jarmusch film. This is not a traditional Western. He referred to it as a psychedelic Western, I think. I've also seen it categorized as an acid Western. Um, but the difference is that in, in an acid Western or a psychedelic Western, generally speaking, the, the further west you go, the more insane the world becomes, which is not how your traditional Western works. Usually there's, there's hope for a bright future by traveling west. In, in a Western, but not in these kinds of Westerns. They're kind of like anti-Westerns. And there's quite a few of them, but I think Dead Man is arguably one of the best. It's got a great cast. It's in black and white. It's got an unusual soundtrack. The main character is played by Johnny Depp, who, of course, is a great actor. But the main character's name is William Blake, and he spends most of the movie dying because of a gunshot that he gets early in the film. I think it was one of the last performances from the great... Robert Mitchum. But here is the question inspired by this. Have you read William Blake? And what do you think uh, of William Blake's poems? The, oh, by the way, the William Blake in the movie is not William Blake the poet. He's just a character named William Blake. So anyway, yeah, see Dead Man if you haven't. If you think you like Jim Jarmusch, you know, you might not, it might not be your style, but you know, it's worth branching out sometimes just to see if it is. Number two, Blazing Saddles from 1974. This is a comedy western. I think most people are probably familiar with it. Uh, Steve Donahue claims that it's impossible to, to see it anymore because, you know, obviously the politically correct crowd. But I'm here to tell you, if you have enough streaming channels, Blazing Saddles showing on one of them all the time, man. Terrific movie. Um... Part of the plot involves the building of railroad, a railroad track. And uh, so my question that goes with this, my dog's making noise over there in the corner. Hey, knock it off. I don't know what he's into, but it might be my guitar. Have you ever traveled anywhere by train is the question associated with this one. Um, I have not. I've been on a train before, but I've never really traveled by train. But one of the things that we found in my dad's belongings after he died was he had mapped out a, a, a path across the United States going all the way around, round trip, just going on trains. And he had figured out the fares for all of it and stuff. It was really interesting uh, thing to see that he was planning to do. Obviously he never did it, but you know, it, it was still neat. So if you ever traveled anywhere by train, what was that like? Number three, hell or high water from 2016. This is called a, this is what you consider a neo-Western because it's not set during the traditional Old West. The Old West, you know, Old West wasn't a particularly long period of time in America historically. It was only 25 years from, from 1865 to 1890. But, you know, you still see Westerns all the time. You know, uh, there's a movie called HUD, which is, a, which is an early neo-Western starring Paul Newman. But the one I'm suggesting is Hell or High Water, which is about a bank robbery and a couple of Texas Rangers. I always love movies with Texas Rangers in them, but they get extra points if one of the Texas Rangers is played by Jeff Bridges. Anyway, it's a great film. So my question with this one, most of the action in uh, Hell or High Water takes place in the old, in West Texas. So here's my question to you. Have you ever been to West Texas? Uh, it's it's a, like a different country, practically, out there in the panhandle. But uh, if you were to West, if you have been to West Texas, what was it like? And if you've only been as close to West Texas as East New Mexico or something like that, 
What was that like? Number four, The Searchers from 1956. This is one of those five-star Westerns. It stars John Wayne. And uh, this is an example of an epic Western or a more traditional Western. But in The Searchers, John Wayne's niece is kidnapped by a Comanche Indian chief named, uh, a Comanche chief. I guess Indian's not the preferred nomenclature anymore. But Comanche chief named Scar, you know. And so, you know, the Native Americans in this are, are portrayed as the villains because it was 1956. But John Wayne takes off with uh, his half-breed adopted nephew, adopted son, who, who played Captain Pike in the, uh, the original Star Trek pilot. Jeffrey Hunter is the actor's name. And they take off and spent five years trying to track down Scar and, uh, and rescue his niece. And uh, it's got some pretty interesting things to say about racism and that sort of thing. My question that's associated with this is, have you ever spent five or more years on some kind of project or obsession? And if so, what was it like? Number five, Bone Tomahawk from 2015. Bone Tomahawk's great. It's a Western horror film. And it involves a lost race. And it is uh, really creepy and eerie and well-directed. It's a low-budget film. I think they made it for less than $9 million. But it's uh, a terrific cast. You've got Kurt Russell and a whole host of other cool people in it. And uh, here's a question associated with Bone Tomahawk. Um, what are your favorite lost race or lost world novels? Because Bone Tomahawk has a lot in common with that. Number six, and there'll be people arguing about whether or not this is actually a Western. Mad Max from 1979. I love all the Mad Max movies, even beyond Thunderdome. But this original one from 1979, I just rewatched it again the other day. It's just absolutely terrific. This is an example of a post-apocalyptic Western. Did you know that Westerns had so many subgenres? I, I kind of knew, but then, you know, I've read some books about Western movies and and I'm a little obsessed with Western movies. I could have easily made a list of, of top 10 Western movies that were just traditional Westerns, but you know, that wouldn't have been as interesting to me or you either one. Maybe it would have, I don't know. Maybe next year. So my question for Mad Max, and I'm just assuming everybody knows what Mad Max is about. If not, see it because you should. But what kind of driver are you? What's your relationship like with cars? Do you drive? If you do drive, are you an aggressive driver? Do you drive defensively? How would you do in, in a post-apocalyptic world where gas was what it was all about and it, you better make sure you have a car to keep moving? Number seven, one of my favorite Westerns of all time, Unforgiven from 1992. This is considered a revisionist Western where, you know, traditional Westerns, Bad guys wear black hats, good guys wear white hats, and it's not hard to tell them apart. But revisionist westerns tend to look at the Old West in shades of gray. And one of the major themes of Unforgiven, it has to do with some sporting ladies in the town of Big Whiskey who raise a bunch of money to hire some assassins so that they can kill this fella at the Bar T Ranch who got mad and was drunk one night and cut up one of the sporting ladies. And so Clint Eastwood is a, is a retired bad man. And, uh, you know, he recruits a couple of guys to go with him to try to get this money together, even though he's retired from that sort of life because his farm isn't doing well. So, but the big thing of the movie is money and how treat, in fact, the main character's name is William Money. Um, and so, uh, so anyway, the question I have for you, what is your relationship like with money as compared to with people? That's a broad, broad, big question, but I'd be curious to hear what people say about it. I haven't answered any of these questions yet. I'll have to go back through them and answer the questions after I ask them all, okay? So, number eight, Django from 1966. This is not a Quentin Tarantino movie. Uh, this is a Sergio Carucci film, I believe. I could be forgetting the director's name. But it's uh, 
you know, it's a spaghetti western, and I'm a big fan of the spaghetti western. Not everybody likes spaghetti westerns, but I do. But it would be more interesting to talk about a spaghetti western that did not star Clint Eastwood and was not directed by Sergio Leone. And, and it's great, great, great starting scene. You've got this guy in a Union uh, Civil War uniform dragging a casket behind him for the first, I don't know how long in the movie, but he's carrying it around with him everywhere he goes. And nobody knows what's in the casket. People ask him, but he won't tell them. And so, anyway, he gets involved in the middle of a feud, just like Clint Eastwood does in, in a couple of the Man With No Name trilogy movies. And uh, my question related to this one is, have you ever been involved in a feud? And if so, what was that all about? You know, in Django, he's gets in the middle of someone else's feud. But, uh, you know, whether you were on one side or the other, the Hatfields or McCoys who just got caught in the middle, I'd be interested in hearing about your experiences with feuds. Number nine, we're closing in on the end here. The Golden Stallion from 1949. Okay, so this is an obscure one. Okay, this is a B-movie that starred Roy Rogers. And Roy Rogers was one of the big singing cowboys. Most of his movies were pretty light fare. Singing cowboy movies were real popular as B-movies in the 30s and the 40s. And uh, in this particular movie, it examines the relationship that Roy Rogers' character has with his horse. And uh, it's really great. It's really short. It's really great. It was directed by William Whitney. There's a wonderful essay or interview with Quentin Tarantino online at, that introduced me to the, the film and the director of the film uh, where he explains what's so great about it. But you don't have to, you don't really have to hear Quentin Tarantino explain what's so great about this movie because because it's obvious, it's just great. But anyway, my question related to this one is, have you ever had a relationship or a friendship with an animal that was more important than your relationships with most or all people that you have relationships with? And if so, what was that like? Tell us about that. And number 10, the one you've been waiting for, Battle Beyond the Stars from 1980. This is a science fiction Western, and it is a remake of The Magnificent Seven, which also was a remake of Seven Samurai, which was a samurai movie, hence the name. So, uh, so it was popular, especially with the spaghetti Westerns and other Westerns too, to grab a plot from a samurai movie and turn it into a Western. And that's what they did with The Magnificent Seven, but then they translated it into space. And this is kind of cheesy and corny, but it's really got some great stuff in it. For one thing, James Horner conducted the score. He's the same guy who did the music for Star Trek II, The Wrath of Khan. And he's got a recognizable style. But uh, but anyway, it's a really great movie. John Saxon, I believe it's John Saxon, who was in The Magnificent Seven, plays basically his same character from The Magnificent Seven in Battle Beyond the Star. Battle Beyond the Star, excuse me. I get hiccups sometimes. And so, uh, so also, it, it, really great role for George Papard, who plays a character named Cowboy. But, so the question I have related to this, this was the first movie I ever saw at the movie theater, or the first science fiction movie that I ever saw at the movie theater, okay? I was 10 years old in 1980, and boy, I thought this was the coolest thing I'd ever seen. This was a great movie to see when you were 10 years old, okay? So, my question for my friends here on BookTube is, what was the first science fiction movie you ever saw at the movie theater and what did you think of it? So, now I gotta go back through and answer these questions. Okay, so the first question, number one, Dead Man. Have you read William Blake and what do you think of his poetry? Yes, I've read William Blake. Uh, man, just incredible. Yeah, everybody's. I mean, if you have any interest in poems at all, William Blake, I mean, yeah, read William Blake. Songs of Innocence and Songs of Experience. Blow your mind. Number two, have you ever traveled by train on the railroad? No, not really. I mean, I've, I've ridden the train into Dallas from Denton, but that's not even really a train. Number three, hell or high water. Have you been to West Texas? What did you think? Yes. When I was 25, I had a job working for Olin Mills Portrait Studio. I spent two weeks working in Lubbock, Texas, which uh, was a great subject of a great song by Mac Davis. 
but it wasn't that much fun of a town for me to hang out in. I did go to Amarillo to visit a buddy of mine up there, and we did spray paint our names on the Cadillacs at the Cadillac Ranch, which I understand has moved since then, because that was a long time ago. Number four, have you ever spent five plus years on a project or obsession? You know, five or more years. I, you know, I don't know, I guess, does my marriage count? Because we were together for 10 years. Um, no, nah, you know, probably not. You know, most of the projects and stuff that I do tend to come to completion sooner than five years. I, I think I finished my degree in five years. I think it took me five years instead of four. Number five, what are your favorite lost race or lost word novels? Obviously, I'm a big fan of Arthur Conan Doyle's The Lost World, but I also really enjoyed that first book in that series. Oh, hell, I can't remember the name of it now. You know what? When I sat down and wrote this down, I remembered it, but it was one of, uh, it was one of the classic ones. Um, he was a character in The League of Extraordinary Gentlemen. Anyway, somebody will know and will tell me in the comments what it is that I can't think of. Sorry. Another side effect of the medication I'm on. So, Mad Max, what kind of driver are you? What's your relationship with cars like? Okay, so I live in Texas. Everybody in Texas drives cars. Everything's really far apart. You know, when I mentioned that West Texas is like another country, man, it's a good six, seven-hour drive from here. It's a long ways off for someone like me. And I live in North Central. Well, not North Central Texas, but I live... I live west of where I used to live, you know, so, but it's still far, far away from here. But what kind of driver am I? I never go past the speed limit. I don't drive very often anymore because of my illness. Um, I drive to Dallas once a month to see an oncologist. I, I complain about it constantly because, hell, it takes an hour to get there and an hour to get back. And, and you know, I don't know, my legs get wore out with that uh, that right leg. You know, I'm a pretty big guy, so not every vehicle is comfortable for me. In fact, most aren't. So, you know, I'm, I'm usually most comfortable driving myself in my Dodge Ram, so, which I bought new in 2006 and still have. It's only got 167,000 miles on it. So, Number seven, what role does money play in your life? Well, it used to drive me, especially when I was a young father with young kids. You know, I worked around the clock. When I wasn't drinking, I was working, and when I wasn't working, I was drinking. And I did spend a lot of time with my kids when they were little, but but first I made a lot of money because I wanted my family to be taken care of. Now it's a little different. My kids are grown. They don't live with me anymore. You know, uh, I don't need much. I lead a pretty humble lifestyle here at Driftwood Ranch. The rent isn't that high. Well, the rent is really high, but the rent on everything is really high. Relatively speaking, it's not that high. Um, I do like to eat good food. I do go out to a nice restaurant once or twice a month, which is a really different change in my lifestyle too because I used to go out to eat several times a week, but I, I just don't leave the house that much anymore, which is cool because it gives me more time to hang out on booktube with my friends. And then Django, have you ever been involved in any kind of feud? I can't really think of any feuds I've been involved with. Because, you know, I'm kind of the peacemaker type. And, you know, I'm the kind of guy who wants to defuse situations with humor. And, of course, you know, I live in Denton, Texas, you know. I'm not worried about the Crips and the Bloods here, you know. Um, if I lived somewhere else, I'd probably have more experience with feuds. Uh, occasionally, you know, there would be opposing sides on an issue at my local Alcoholics Anonymous group, but I wouldn't call that a feud necessarily. It never lasts long enough to be a feud. And, uh, you know, same way with, of course, I guess the whole country's involved in the middle of a feud now between the, uh, the Republicans and the Democrats. I, I wouldn't have described it as a feud 20 years ago, but I sure wouldn't now. But I'm not too involved in that, man. It just make me unhappy. And, you know, I don't know how much time I have left. I don't want to spend it being, I don't want to spend all of it being mad at, well, I don't really have an opinion on it share about that here, but you could probably guess. Number nine, the golden stallion. Have you ever had a friendship with an animal that was more important than your friendship with a lot of humans? I have a dog now named Brockmeyer, and he's a pound dog. And I got him just before I got sick. 
maybe six months before I got sick. I also got him right about the time my dad died. And so, uh, and he's just a wonderful dog and he suits my personality wonderfully. You know, my family's always had really small dogs in the past, uh, but I wanted a big dog. I wanted a big dog that, that could uh, sleep with me in the bed and I'd know he was there, you know what I mean? And he's just been wonderful. He's got some aggression towards other dogs, but he's great with people. And uh, he gets along okay with my other dog, Orson, who's an elderly half pug, half beagle. So, you know, he's probably my closest friendship with an animal. And uh, I'll tell you what, I wouldn't trade him for most people. And number 10, what was the first science fiction movie you saw at the movie theater? You already know. It was Battle Beyond the Stars, which is terrific, and you can see it. So there's a list of 10 movies. There's a list of 10 questions. I'm going to tag some people in the description. But, you know, if you thought this looked like a fun tag to do, Get in there and do it while Gina and the range is still going on. We've only got till Friday, right? Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, this was fun. I hope to, I, I hope people will, will make videos of this. It's my first time, though. Maybe, maybe this wasn't a very good tag. You let me know.